So, looks like we're, uh, we're starting to figure this out. Sounds like Lance did orchestrate his own kidnapping. Um, I guess turned on his, on one of his partners and tried to frame his other. That's what this is looking like. What is that, a sword? It's not an especially reliable one if it's broken like that. Allow me to start from the end. My conclusion is, is that the door was never locked. It was simply held shut by this sword, which was used to jam the handle. Lance, even though your hands were cuffed together, you could still use them. If that's the case, then why did you not just simply remove the sword and escape? Why didn't I? I was disoriented. Yes, that's it. I didn't notice it. As if I should accept such a bold-faced lie. You locked yourself in that room because you had to make yourself look like the victim. But you did not, in fact, possess the key to the door. That's why you used the prop sword to improvise and create a prison of your very own. You've been making the kid the guy out to be one of the kidnappers for some time now. I wonder if you've forgotten something very important along the way. And what would that be? A motive. What else? Do you honestly think that an upright, pure boy like him would hatch up a completely pointless scheme such as kidnapping himself? Objection! This proves that Lance did indeed have a motive to kidnap, to commit this crime. Wait. It was this, wasn't it? He was, he was in debt with Tender Lender. That was why he needed the money. To put it simply, Lance has a very urgent need for money. This is hardly your typical love letter. It is, in fact, a collections bill. It appears our upstanding boy has accumulated quite a debt. Isn't that right, Lance? <laughs> Looks like it's hard being in the son of a rich man, too. Must be rough when you have to resort to stealing from your own old man, huh? <laughs> Alright, I give up! I abducted myself! Lance! It's over, Lolly. In this life, we really are bound to our fates after all. All I wanted was to go with you to a new town, somewhere where no one would know us. I wanted us to be well off with that one million, but now, that dream is over. Lance! Then you're giving yourself up? Yes. I'd planned to run away from this world with my lolly. Oliver even helped us with the plan, but then he had to go stab us in the back! He turned on you. Maybe he didn't want to split the ransom money. That's my guess. It happened almost right after you made the drop-off. When we were alone, he attacked me all of a sudden. After a brief struggle, I was able to contain him and keep him under control. We left him outside that room as Lolly and I made our escape. We 
wore different costumes and split up. Lolly left first in the blue badger costume. That would mean the person Officer Meekins saw was Ms. Fel Ms. Palps. But right then, the old man just had to wake up. I was careless, and he tackled me pretty hard from behind. Then, Oliver put on a bad badger costume, took the suitcase with a million dollars, and ran. I contacted Lolly right away and warned her that he had a gun. They had no idea they were related, so I thought it could only end badly. I still don't believe it. That person was not my father. Because... Because if he was, I... I just killed my own father. <sighs> Lolly, then it really was you? This is... This, this is... This is all pretty tragic if this is true. That man was not my father. I mean, because at the stadium, there was a bad badger pulling the suitcase with the one million dollars in it. But that badger pointed his gun at me, aiming to shoot me dead. That's why I, I used the gun I got from Lance. There was a gunshot. The other person crumpled to the ground, and I ran, scared for my life. ran. You didn't move the body? I think the big picture's finally coming into focus, don't you? Lolly, forgive me. I didn't think it would turn into something so frightening. If only... If only I could have protected you. So, Miss Palps, she shot her own dad without even knowing who he really was? If what she says is true... Are you saying she's lying? But why would she lie about something like that? What purpose would it serve? You'd be surprised how often people lie without even realizing it themselves, Kay. Huh? What's that supposed to mean? What I mean is listen very carefully to her confession once more and you'll see. That was the ransom money, wasn't it? Yes. That's how he was able to identify Mr. Deacon almost immediately. It was all thanks to what Lance told me. And what did he tell you? Well, he called me on my cell phone and told me that Mr. Deacon had betrayed us and run off with the ransom money. And about how he had a gun. able to clearly see the gun. Yes, I got a very good look at it while it was pointed at me. Father, why would you try to shoot me? Do you really think a father would shoot his own daughter, Mr. Edgeworth? I don't know. I don't want to believe it myself. But it's true. My father's left arm was raised with a gun in... dominant hand is his right hand. I think this is it here. Pointed straight at me. I'm about to die, I thought. Miss Palps. Please calm down and take a deep breath. And then, would you allow me to please hear that last statement one more time? Yes, of course. Objection! I 
have your dossier on, on your father. You know, when I, when I saw Dominant Hand write this, I kind of wondered if it was going to come into play. Big brain move right there. <laughs> and according to this, your father was right-handed. Uh, then... The person pointing a gun at you from atop the stage was not Mr. Deacon. Hold on there, Mr. Prosecutor. I think you need to take a refresher course. The Bad Badger has a model gun attached to his right hand. Which is why the only hand he could have held the real gun with was his left. Isn't it possible that it went, that it went down like that? Agent Lang, were you paying attention to what Ms. Palps was saying? Then again, I suppose I can't expect someone who's never set foot in court to catch it. Ooh. Edgeworth coming back with the... with the sass. Enough with the smugness. Out with it already. Miss Palps told us earlier... Right, so... So he couldn't have had a gun in both hands. According to you, the Bad Badger had the gun in his left hand. Which would mean that he was pulling the suitcase with his right hand. Is that correct, Miss Pelps? Yes, exactly. And I'm sure it was the Bad Badger. It had those huge sunglasses on its face. But if that's the case, even I can see a huge contradiction. Yes, Miss Palps claims to have seen the Bad Badger. And yet the Bad Badger had both of his hands full. These two pieces of information contradict each other. So one must be wrong. What if... No, I wondered something... Something earlier in this case. They are both correct. Impossible! That just leaves us with an unresolvable contradiction. Miss Palps' entire statement rests on the fact that she saw... She saw his sunglasses and beard. But what if that bad badger wasn't wearing pants on his lower half? Right, they could have been using... They could have been using the body of a different one. Of one of the other blue ones, at least. This proves there is a way for the Bad Badger to freely use both of his hands. Costumes have two parts to them, the head and the body. Oh, I get it now. The head Miss Palp saw was probably the head of the Bad Badger. However, is, is it not possible that the body was that of an entirely different Badger? A different Badger? Yes, or to put it more bluntly, I believe it was the lower half of this Badger. wearing she was wearing this one this one wasn't being used Take that. What, what the heck is it it's the proto badger yes it's a simple matter of process of elimination miss palps was wearing the blue badger's costume so we can eliminate that one and the pink badger is the wrong color which would have been incredibly obvious all that's left is the Proto Badger costume. Miss Palps, who is the one who wore the Proto Badger costume? That would be Lance. Mm. 
are you saying what I think you are? That Lance Amato donned the Bad Badger's head and pretended to be Mr. Deacon? On top of which, he plotted to shoot Miss Pelps while wearing that hideous thing? The stage that was set up in the stadium was nothing more than that, a setup. And its purpose was to lead Miss Pelps into believing she committed murder. Standing there in front of Miss Pelps and pretending to be the victim. done so that she would pull the trigger. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Why exactly would I have had to do all that, huh? There's but one reason, Lance Amano. You're the real culprit behind the murder of Mr. Oliver Deacon. What? No! That's slander! Take it back! You take it back right now! Just out of curiosity, Lance, which is your dominant hand? I'm left-handed. But what does that have to do with anything? Depends. According to Miss Palps, her attacker held a gun in his left hand. <laughs> Who is what hand? It doesn't prove a thing. And besides, now you're just being absurd. It's not like the Proto Badger's bulletproof. One misfire and he would have found himself dead, right? Objection! Of course. Logically, if he had been shot, he probably wouldn't be here with us. But I believe he had thought of that as well, and prepared accordingly. Then this should be all the evidence you need. This is how Lance made sure he wouldn't be hit by a bullet. This one, that's the one. That's the one, she... The gun he gave her was only capable of firing blanks. We found one half of a Bad Badger costume in the hideout. A broken one. It wasn't the same one the victim was wearing. Plus it was missing something. And that something is the model gun that the Bad Badger carries, which can fire blanks. What?! Miss Palps, where's the gun you use now? I... I threw it away into the sea. That makes it a bit tough to verify what it was. Although I believe we can safely assume that it was the model gun in question. I've heard enough. All you've been spouting so far is pure conjecture. I admit that as long as the model gun is lost to us, I can't prove I'm right. However, I can say that the probability that I'm right is very high. Okay, let's pretend that you're right and the murder of the stadium was a fabrication. In that case, where do you think the murder really took place, Mr. Prosecutor? I don't know yet. It might have been in the... in the hideout itself. Possibly. Ha! I knew you were full of it. However, I do believe that the murder took place during an earlier time frame. Please, wait a second. It's simply not possible. Because... Because... I saw Mr. Deacon after he was restrained by Lance. She saw the victim in the state of being restrained.
I came back to the hideout long after the other two. By that time, Lance had already subdued and restrained Mr. Deacon. He had tied Mr. Deacon securely to the beam in the room next door. The room next... the same room that... that Edgy was restrained in. After that, the two of us put on our costumes and made our escape. So, Mr. Deacon must have escaped after the two of you left, right? We thought it would attract too much attention if we left together, so I left first. We planned to meet up again at the stage in the stadium. But then, as I was walking through the park, I got, I got a call from Lance on my cell phone. Oliver managed to escape. It looked like he was waiting until I was alone. He also stole the gun from me at that time. And then the murder happened. Mr. Deacon must have overheard their plan to meet up at the stage. Well, Mr. Prosecutor, Ms. Palp saw the victim with her own eyes. Which means the victim was still alive at that time, wouldn't you agree? Why does that sound wrong to me? There must be something amiss about this account. Let's see what happens when I examine it in more detail. sure it was Mr. Deacon that you saw. Yes, I'm certain of what I saw. Did you go into the other room to check? Lance said it was best if I didn't get too close to him. It was Edgeworth that she saw, wasn't it? Lance, he's such a kind soul. Then, are you telling me that you did not confirm that it was Mr. Deacon for yourself? I checked with the slit in the door that separates the two rooms. He had a bad badger's head on, so I'm abs- You didn't see his fate, and we saw the bad badger head in the room. Mm. That's- that's exactly what happened, wasn't it? That just had to be Mr. Deacon. She saw a bad badger head? If Mr. Deacon was alive in the hideout, then the murder must have happened after that. Meaning it probably all went down with the stage. I mean, I can't really see why Mr. Palps would lie at a time like this, you know. Okay, I don't think she's lying, but rather that she's making a bad assumption. She is? Yes, and I tend to show what that bad assumption is. Hold it! So the tied-up Mr. Deacon was still in his Bad Badger costume. Yes, and? It would appear that she misread the whole situation. What now, should I raise an objection? Oh, hell yes. Hell yes, I object. The, vi the person you saw was not the victim. What? Why not? I'll tell you why not with this. This, Miss Palp, shows us that the person shows us that the person you saw was not the victim. Take that! Miss Palps, the person you saw was not Mr. Deacon at all. Huh? The person you actually saw was this person. You saw Edgy. It was me. Huh? The person I saw was you, Mr. Edgeworth? I always thought it was a bit odd. 
Why would the kidnappers abduct me even after I handed over the ransom? Ooh, get nervous. It's not as though I saw the face of the kidnappers. If I were them, I would have just taken the million dollars and ran. But in the end, there was a point to it all. It was to make me look like Mr. Deacon. And if that was the reason for which I was abducted, then I believe we can assume that the victim was already dead at that time. Well, Lance, am I right? That's... You showed Miss Palps a person, namely me, with a bad badger's head on, and then made your costume to escape together, or so you pretended. What do you mean he pretended? Exactly that. I believe Lance watched you escape and then doubled back to the hideout. Probably to come and remove the bad badger head from my unconscious self. Uh... <laughs> and to create his fake prison with the prop sword, he then escaped via the passageway. Hold your tongue, boy! Don't get caught up in that tidal wave of words coming out of Mr. Prosecutor's mouth. Tidal wave. We've heard a lot come out of you, but we have yet to... But I've yet to see a shred of evidence. The victim's betrayal and his subsequent detainment? All of that could have happened while you were out cold. That's right. You were out for quite a while, Mr. Prosecutor. Even if that were the case, Miss Palps would have still seen me tied to that beam. I, I was scared of Mr. Deacon, so I didn't go into the next room. So I really have no idea if you were in there or not, Mr. Edgeworth. You see, it would seem you can't prove a thing. Ugh. Who said that? Oh. Please wait. Mr. Romano? <laughs> Miles, my boy, it looks like you're really giving it your all. Uh, do you have something to contribute to this? And Lance. It's not good to cause trouble for others. Dad? Let's see, you're the one in charge of the investigation, correct? Yeah, that's right. I'm sorry my son has been nothing but trouble. This probably won't make up for anything, but I have some evidence for you. Oh. Lay it on us. Do you now? Huh? Is that what I think it is? A bad badger costume. The victim was wearing. And a gun. And another gun. And a, bu a bullet hole in the, uh, where, the, like, the belt would be. I couldn't wait around for the police, so I went and found these myself. It appears they were disposed of in the sea. Oh, along with... That was where... Ugh. Is there no one in this country who actually obeys the law? There, there, there. There, there now. Agent Lang, please calm down. What the heck is that scrap of paper? This appears to be a letter from the Chief of Police. Please allow Mr. Romano complete freedom to do as he sees fit, it says. In. Okay, he's got quite a bit of pull. What? The Chief of Police? What the? 
Because who does he think he is? The person who wields the highest authority in this area. <laughs> there, there now. There's no need to be so upset. <laughs> I'm not a cop from this land. So I'm not bound by the laws of your country. Now, now, now. This wasn't meant to strong arm you to anything. It's just a request. I'm only asking you please respect the laws of the land. Ugh. I can't really say no to that. However, returning to the topic at hand. It doesn't matter who found the evidence. Its value remains unchanged. All right, now let's take a look at this new evidence. I've already got the results back. I had a special forensics research lab that I'm, good, that I'm on good terms with conduct the tests. They verified that the blood on this costume belonged to Oliver. As for the gun... Oh, okay, yeah, so this was the... So that must have been the Bad Badger costume that... That Deacon was shot in. The only fingerprints they could find were yours, Lauren. That was that was the one she said she disposed of. What? Oh, but that might have been the one that had the blanks in it, though. So that so that the quote bad badger could fake his death. disappoint me, Miles. I can't believe that you... that you would cause my son such stress and heartache. Thank goodness I was able to find the final pieces of evidence. With this, you'll have no reason to push my poor boy around. That's it? These are the case-making pieces of evidence? Huh. I'll be the judge of that. I won't wrestle a damn suspicious looking cranny. Okay, first let's look at let's look at that bullet hole. This bullet hole. It looks like some kind of burn around the edges. Wait, those burn marks were left by gunpowder. This is the most important fact. Oh, I know this. I know this bit. This means he was shot at point blank, right? Why is that? Because it's proof the victim was shot at point blank range. Yes. Bingo. murder weapon. Nothing for this other gun. What, what, what's this? It looks like there's something inside the costume head. Hey, these sparkle. I'll bet they're really valuable. Sorry, but they're just pieces of a mirror. But why are they in here? And we found, we found a broken mirror in the, uh, in the hideout, didn't we? He's not the most definitive piece of evidence you've ever seen. Well, I wouldn't say that, but... I mean, I'm sure they're going to... be critical. Thank you, Dad. This should be enough evidence... This should be enough to convince even Mr. Edgeworth over there.
Make no mistake, there are fingerprints on that murderous gun. And they prove it was Lolly who killed Oliver. But Oliver was also after Lolly's life. So Mr. Edgeworth, even you must see Lolly was only acting in self-defense. The fingerprints on the weapon, huh? Oh no, this isn't helpful at all. Look, Mr. Edgeworth, all I want to do is save Lolly. But in the end, all I can do is watch on as she takes the punishment for her crimes. Can we check this at all? They found Miss Palp's fingerprints on this gun. Can you let me hold it for a sec? I shouldn't if you don't know how to handle it. Besides, Miss Palp's prints are on it. Look, I'm wearing gloves. I'll be okay. I just want to take a look. That's all. It's not like I'm going to run off with it. The only things I don't... The only things I don't return are treasures. Stealing either one would land you in jail, you know. Can we... Can we examine the bullets, though? That's what I'm trying to... Doesn't look like it. may be all you can do, however, I still have a case to solve and a job to do. The job of unraveling your insidious lie. You wound me. Why won't you believe me, even in the face of all this evidence? Sure, they belong to Miss Palps. There's no mistake about it. Even though my through my connections, I had the best forensic techniques money can buy performed. I find that to be a bit peculiar. What? Are you trying to pick an argument with me? Uh, what should I do? Should I raise an objection? Frankly, I don't believe that Miss Palps' print should be on that gun to begin with. And the reason why Miss Palps' print should not be on the gun is... They should have all been wearing... Gosh. How did... If, if they were all wearing badger costumes, how did they leave prints? Take that! simply not possible for Miss Palps to have left any prints on the murder weapon. Because while she was at the stadium, Miss Palps was wearing a costume. Huh? But there's been no mistake! We found fingerprints! Well, Miss Palps, do you remember touching the gun at all at any given time? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, I did hold it for a bit back in the hideout. I handed it off to Mr. Deacon when he and Lance left for the haunted house. To retrieve the ransom money, I suppose. And there you have it. That's when Ms. Palps' prints found their way onto the gun. Ugh. Ooh, he's getting flustered now. Do you understand now, Mr. Romano? The fingerprints do nothing to prove that Ms. Palps is the murderer. But you still don't have anything to prove that she isn't the killer, right? You seem very adamant about insisting that your girlfriend is a cold-blooded killer. Lance! What? No way! I'm incredibly worried about her! But that doesn't change the fact that you don't have any evidence, right? 
<laughs> That's where you're wrong. I have the evidence. What? How? The story that Miss Palps killed the victim in this at the stage in the stadium. The whole affair is simply not true because that was not the real crime scene, but a setup. This proves the real murder was not committed at the stadium at all. Okay, where is it? Did we not get it as evidence? Oh, wait. Okay, yes, he was shot at... Powder burn is proof he was shot from point blank. Take that! Let us take another good look at the costume the victim was wearing. Then I believe you'll see why he insists he was not shot at the stadium. Take that! Burn around this bullet hole is made when the victim was shot at point blank range. Ah, so the, you mean the murder Ms. Oldbag saw at the stadium really was. That was staged. Yes, she, she saw two people, but they were separated by a distance. If the victim was shot from below the stage, there shouldn't be a gunpowder burn. Yeah. Huh. Look at you, Mr. Smarty Pants Prosecutor! Since you seem to know all the answers, why not tell us where the real crime scene is, then? Lance set me up to look like Mr. Deacon back at the hideout. If that's the case, the murder must have happened prior to that. And the location where Lance and the victim were at just before I was in prison was... I've got it! I know the real scene of the murder! And I think... yeah... And I think she just told us the real location in which Mr. Deacon was killed was here, at the haunted house. I think it's not unreasonable to assume the murder took place in the haunted house. And we even found those, again, those broken mirror fragments in his costume. Yes, and I prove it's highly likely the victim was killed here. What proves the real scene of the crime was the haunted house? Take that! These were inside the costume the victim was wearing. They're fragments of a mirror. A mirror? What does that have to do with anything? Indeed. You don't exactly expect to find pieces for a mirror inside a costume. Yeah, that's actually pretty dangerous. However, there is one place I can think of where there's a plethora of mirror fragments. And that's the haunted house. Lance Amano, I, I propose that you killed Mr. Deacon with the revolver in the haunted house. Okay, is this Clue now? <laughs> what? 
why... Again, I pointed out... A while back, I pointed out the lack of a... Uh, of a Danganronpa edition of Clue. And there should also be an Ace Attorney edition of Clue. After that, you stole the Blue Badger Mobile to move the body to the Wild West area. The timing of when the Blue Badger Mobile was stolen confirms this as fact. Miles, my boy, say no more! I'm sorry, Mr. Romano, but I can't do that. Be quiet! Yes, please, do something! Stop that boy from speaking any more nonsense! Ernest Amato, correct? I meant you. Now be quiet, Gramps. How dare you! I don't need words. The only thing I require is evidence. Decisive evidence. And to call these mere bits decisive is a bit too too presumptuous, Mr. Prosecutor. What? Sheena, wasn't there a mirror in the kidnapper's hideout? Yes, there was a mirror there. Yes, we found that, too. A mirror that's for the haunted house. You see? Isn't it possible the fragments got into the costume there? But Agent Lang, there were no fragments on the floor, so the probability is very low. Not so fast. Probability? <laughs> Lang Zi says, on Truth's path, the world probability does not exist. The only thing that does is definitive proof. The question, Mr. Prosecutor, is do you have the definitive proof you need? Well, Mr. Edgeworth, do you? Hmm. Do I have solid evidence that proves the murder took place at the haunted house? The answer is no. See? So since you don't have any, shut up! I don't have the evidence yet, but... I'm certain the murder occurred around the time I turned the ransom over. At that time, the only people at the haunted house besides myself were Lance and Mr. Deacon. If I can prove the murder took place at the haunted house, then I can prove Lance's guilt in connection to the murder. What now, Mr. Edgeworth? Agent Lang, I have a special request. Yeah? I'd like to prove to you that the scene of the crime was indeed the haunted house. Why in the world are you asking the werewolf for permission? <laughs> because I don't really have a choice if I want to find the truth. Alright. Permission granted. But you're not going to touch a single thing, got it? That won't be a problem. All that's important to me is that the truth be brought to light. It doesn't matter by who or how it's done, as long as it is. <laughs> Sheena! I'm here. Put in the paperwork for the authorization immediately. Understood. I'll go get the Gatewater Group's approval. Huh? Now what? Who is that? Now, now... Let's hold on for a second. There's no need to obtain approval. Mr. Romano? Agent Lang, if you would please take a look at this. What is this? Sheena? It's... The deed to the haunted house. The deed? Read it out loud. Gatewater Land, Inc. hereby bequeaths the property known as the haunted house to Mr. Romano for the lump sum of $1 million paid in full in cash. $1 million. That's... That's the same as the ransom. Is there, is there a connection? What? <laughs> As you can see, I am now the legal owner of the haunted house. Are you kidding? When did you... 
I ran into the owner of the park earlier, and we made the deal almost immediately. How quickly things move when you can prepare a million dollars in the blink of an eye. <laughs> okay, Mr. Moneybags here is just... Th that one million you paid. Don't tell me it was... Oh, that's right. This disgusting suitcase belongs to you, doesn't it? Why do you have that? I don't have any more use for it, so you may have it back now. You use the ransom money? My Lance is a good boy. He even apologized for the kidnapping a bit earlier. So you already knew! Oh, this... this guy looking sus now. So I do believe that I will forgive him. After all, he did return the ransom money. That's the way things are, so if you would please discuss things with me from now on. Discuss? What is there to discuss? Why, permission to enter the haunted house, of course. While we were busy listening to Lance's story, Mr. Amano was out there preempting us. Permission to search the haunted house is denied. End of discussion. Agent Lang, I want you to arrest that girl. And Miles, you should hurry on home now, my boy, before I really lose my temper. <sighs> Mr. Amano definitely has the deck stacked in his favor here. What should I do? If I leave it like this, the truth will be lost forever. Oh, man. Oh, man. I think... It looks like the final chapter's pretty short, so... I think we'll be alright going... Going forward, but again, give me a few minutes, and hopefully we will conclude this.